In this tutorial, we'll be discussing precipitation reactions and ionic equations. Reactions in which a solid or precipitate is formed upon mixing two solutions is called a precipitation reaction. If two solutions are combined and nothing happens, in other words, no solid is formed, no color change, etc., this means no reaction actually occurred. So we're looking for changes when we mix the two things together. Only insoluble compounds will form a precipitate. For instance, here's an example. We have potassium iodide mixing with lead nitrate. So here's the potassium iodide. Here's the lead nitrate. They're both soluble. But when they're mixed together, the lead iodide is formed. And that's this yellow precipitate that we see. And we actually have a list of rules to signify which ones will be soluble and which ones won't. These are the solubility rules. For instance, if we look back here at our example, potassium iodide was soluble. While here, anything with potassium in it is going to dissolve. It's soluble. The next one is lead nitrate. Nitrate is here. Anything with nitrate in it, with no exceptions, will dissolve. And what it formed was lead, I, lead to iodide. Well, iodide is supposed to be soluble. However, lead is an exception, so that means it will actually form a solid. Here are some more rules. These are insoluble, so hydroxide will normally be insoluble. It will form something. However, if it mixes with one of these, it won't. Same with sulfur and these. All right, so when we write out precipitation reactions, first thing we want to do is to determine which ions, what ions are in each aqueous reactant. Determine the formulas of possible products. You do this by exchanging the ions, the positive and the negative switch places. Balance the charges and combine the ions to get the formula of, of each product. And we'll be doing examples of these in just a second. Determine solubility of each product in water. So look at the solubility rules, which one will form a solid and which one won't. If neither product forms a solid, if neither one of them will precipitate, we write no reaction after the arrow. If either product is insoluble, meaning it's going to actually form something, write the formulas of the products after the arrow, writing an S after the product that's insoluble and will precipitate, and a Q after products that are soluble and will not, so which ones are still dissolved in water. And then you balance the equation. So let's take a look at this. We can think about this logically if we say that the positive is always written first. No matter what, the positive is always written first. Three positive, one minus. In the chemical equation, the positive is written first. So if we exchange the ions, we can do this by going inside ions go together and the outside ions go together. And then those are automatically flipping places. So lithium with a one plus is now combined with nitrate, which has a one minus. Once you get the ions together, notice I didn't take these little numbers with it. I left those alone because those little numbers come from crisscrossing the charges. So it becomes Li1NO3-1. Then once you do that, you're going to want to look at the solubility rules. Well, lithium is right here meaning it is soluble, which means it'll dissolve. So this will still be a Q. So LiNO3 AQ. All right, so the other one, the inside ions come together. The positive one is always written first, Li3 plus and CO3 with a negative 2. Once again, I didn't bring, the only time I brought the little numbers over is when it's part of the polyatomic ion. Crisscross it, Al2CO3, parentheses 3. Now we have to figure out if that one's soluble. 
if we go to this chart for the solubility rules, we notice CO3 is insoluble, which means it will form a solid, which means we want to come back here and put that S. Because we actually have something formed, we're going to go ahead and write it up here, LiNO3, which is aqueous, is bonded to Al2CO3, which is solid. Now we balance it. So we have three CO3s here. We only have one here, so I'm going to put a three in front. I have one NO3 here. I have three of them here, so I'm going to put a three in front of it. That actually messes up our lithium, so I'm actually going to come back to that in a second. Aluminum is two. I'm going to put a two in front of here. This then changes my number of nitrates to be two times three. So this should actually be a six. So three lithium carbonates, two aluminum nitrates, six lithium nitrates, and one aluminum carbonate. Let's try another example. We have potassium hydroxide is mixing with iron three nitrate. I know it's a positive three, even though it's on the periodic table as a transition metal, because that came from here. All right, so we're going to try to do a precipitation reaction, double replacement. The inside ions come together, and the outside ions come together. So K1 plus is now with NO3, one minus. Crisscross it, and it becomes KNO3. Now we want to look at the solubility rules to see if those are listed. And we find that K is right here, and it's supposed to be soluble. So that means that KNO3 is indeed aqueous. Now the inside ions come together. Fe, as I mentioned before, is a three plus because of uncrossing that charge. OH is a minus one charge. Crisscross it becomes Fe three, or I'm sorry, Fe OH three. Now we have to determine if that one produces a solid. We find that OH forms a solid unless it's one of these, and iron is not one of the exceptions. So that means that is going to be your solid. So we can actually write it out because we do have a product being formed. KNO3 aqueous and FeOH3 solid. From here we need to balance. We have three hydroxides on this side, on the right side, so we need to multiply this by three. That changes our potassium to three. So we'll change that. That gives us three nitrates, and we have three nitrates, so we're good. One more practice. The inside ions come together. The outside ions come together. Sodium, one plus, is now with S2 minus. Crisscross it down, Na2S. Now let's look at our solubility rules. S is typically insoluble, however, because we're dealing with sodium, it's an exception. So this is going to be aqueous. Now the Ca and the C2H three O two come together. C A is a plus two. O acetate is a minus one. Crisscross it becomes C A C two H three O two two. All right, let's take a look at these solubility rules. Acetate is right here, and it's always soluble, so that's going to be aqueous. Because both of these are aqueous, we can actually say no reaction. You will also see an abbreviation that says no RxN. That means the exact same thing. But because they were both aqueous, 
we can move on and nothing is actually formed. Okay, so representing aqueous reactions, there's two more ways that you can represent these chemical equations. The molecular equation, which is showing the complete neutral formulas for each compound in the reaction as if they existed as molecules. That's what we just did. Then the complete ionic equation, equation which individually lists all the ions that are present as either reactants or products. So now we're taking all the aqueous ones and breaking them down. The spectator ions are the ones that don't really participate in the reaction. They're just there in the water and they'll stay in the water. So once we remove those, we get the net ionic equation, which shows only the ions are actually changed during the chemical reaction. So let's do a couple of these. This is the exact same equation we had before. So the inside and outsides come together, and we know that we produced lithium nitrate and, and that's aqueous and aluminum carbonate and we went ahead and we balanced it there was three which made this six which made this two All right, so when we're doing the net ionic and complete ionic equation, every single time you see a Q, you're going to break those down into the ions. So we have lithium, we know it's a plus one. We have two of them here, but we're multiplying it by three, so we actually have six lithiums. We have carbonate, which is a negative two. This is a whole. So we have three of them. We have another aqueous sign here, so we're going to break these apart. Aluminum is a three plus, and we have two of them. And we have nitrate, which is a minus one. We have three of them here, and we're multiplying it by two, so we have a six total. We have aqueous here, so we're going to break that down lithium plus, and we have six of them, and we have nitrate, and we have six of those. Because this is solid, we're going to keep it all together. Now, there's a couple different ways to go about doing this. For one way is to look at the left and the right hand side of the equation and say, okay, those are exactly the same on the left and the right, so they're not going to be counted. You can do that with the nitrates as well. Those are spectator ions. Those are the ones that don't actually participate. Another way of doing it is saying this is what's being formed, the aluminum carbonate. And then aluminum and carbonate are the things making it up. So 3CO3 AQ and 2Al3 plus AQ are coming together to be Al2CO33. I neglected to put AQs next to all the ions, so I'm going back and doing that right now. All right. So this up here is the complete ionic. This down here, once we take all the ions out, is the net ionic. All right, we're going to try this again. This is the exact same question we had before, inside outsides. So we know we have KNO3, and that's going to be aqueous, and FeOH3, and that's going to be our solid. When we balanced it, we had three potassiums, potassium hydroxides, and we had three potassium nitrates.
Okay, so now that we have our balanced chemical equation, every time you see AQ, this is to write the complete ionic. and the net ionic. Every time you see AQ, you're going to break it up into positives and negatives. So we have K plus aqueous, and we have three of them. We have OH minus aqueous, and because of that coefficient, we have three of those. We have Fe it's a 3 plus, and we know that because of down here, aqueous. We only have one of them. We have NO3 minus aqueous. Once again, we have three of those. Now, on this one, it's a solid, so I'm going to keep that all together. FeOH3 solid. And this one's aqueous, so we break that up. So K plus, we have three of them, aqueous. And NO3 minus aqueous, we have three of those. Now let's take out the spectator ions. We know we see potassium on the right, as well as potassium on the left. And we have nitrates on the left and nitrates on the right. So those are going to be our spectator ions. The ones that are remaining are, are, are going into our net ionic equation. So three hydroxides and one iron is making iron three hydroxide. Once again, it, you can either look from left to right, or you can look at what the solid is made and pull them out that way. And that explains the solubility rules as well as how to predict and balance ionic equations.